All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The city of Tucson and the county of Pima. Listen, <laughs> good morning, everybody. You know what time it is. You're saying, what is that voice? You know whose voice it is. Yeah. It is Dr. Holt <laughs> and with Fresh Start. And we are excited to see you on this Saturday morning. So get up, get up, get up. You got to get up because Tom Cortese is in the building, too. <laughs> and he also said you can't be laying down sleepy. Right. Uh, you cannot just be on your phone, not mm. giving us wow. any attention. Uh, you cannot be on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok while the Fresh Star show is on. Are you kidding me? That's One of the best shows in the nation, mm. especially that deals with incarceration. Mm. Of course, you got to be paying attention. So get up. Mm. Get up, get up, get up, get your coffee, get your mocha latte, get your Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks, and Captain Crunch, because it is the Fresh Start Show, and we're excited for you on this morning. Listen, we want you to meet us there, beat us there. You hear it said on all the time. We mm. are coming back in our fourth year at the Tucson Convention Center, October 19, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Get your cousin them. Get Ray Ray them. Mm -hmm. Get Mika them. Get Jose them. <laughs> get Maria them. Get Billy there. We all need to be coming down, meeting us or beating us at the Fresh Start Expo going down October 19th. So keep it locked on that date. Listen, we got another event coming up real soon. One of our, it is kind of like what we would call the miniature Mm. Expo called the Empowerment Clinic, which is a smaller mm. version of the one stop shop, the ultimate headquarters of public safety. Listen, we are partnering again with the Goodwill, and we want you to meet us. Isn't it 1940? What's that? Yeah, 1940. 1940 Silver Lake. Yep. Uh, so come join us. Um, at on July 13th, yep. Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And guess what? It's Warrant Day. Mm. Saturday, July 13th for Fresh Start is Warrant Day. Let me say that again. Okay. Warrant Day. What does that mean? Warrant resolution. What does that mean? Squashing warrants. We're going to be doing it through the city courts and justice courts. Mm. We will not be having superior courts dealing with all of the other stuff we do, like with restoration of rights. We'll see you in October for that. But in July, if you got misdemeanor warrants through the city courts, through justice courts, you got any failure to appear, mm -hmm. uh, you had some tickets and you didn't show up to the court date, nine times out of ten, there's a warrant for your arrest. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people think, oh, I didn't get nothing in the mail. Well, maybe they got the wrong address. Uh, maybe they got the wrong zip code. So maybe you didn't. But I do know if you got a failure to appear, and uh, the police officer saw that you did not make a full complete stop at a stop sign and decides to pull you over for that violation, mm. runs your driver's license and your social and your, and your registration. Oh, He's going to oh, be on. notified there's a warrant and you're going to get arrested. Mm. And not only going to get arrested, but your car is going to get towed. So you're going to be paying towing fees. You're going to be paying uh, like 30 to $50 a day while your car is sitting there, bail. while you're racking up fines and fees and bail, all of that, mm. just off of one little end. And I don't know you're saying, Dr. Holt, is that, is that really can go on? Tom will tell you, this stuff goes on every single day. Yep. This is why we're saying when you got your tickets, you need to do something about them. Because if you don't pay your tickets and you don't show up to your court date, the judge is going to issue a warrant. So um, we're working on July 13th, the warrant day. Some of y'all know y'all got warrants. Some of y'all are taking a risk driving. All it takes is one minor. It don't have to be major. It doesn't have to be a big speeding ticket. Mm -mm. It could be something as minor as your, your signal light not working. <laughs> and if you get pulled over, that signal light is going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, including you sitting in jail, including your wife now got to try to figure out how to bail you out, including you might lose your job because you are no-show more than one or two times your job is gone mm. because you're sitting in jail. Yeah. I mean, Tom, talk about this. You we see it all I, the time. Bro, I, I just talked to a guy that was contacting us fresh start asking about to lie and stuff like that. <laughs> and he was telling me, bro, that he had the instance where he was attracted to a female sheriff and he was laying some rap down. And she says, how do I know you're not an ex-con or something like that? He said, go ahead and run me. And he had a warrant. 
And here's the thing. You may not know that you have a warrant because you just thought you didn't have to pay that fine or because those fees nobody was ever chasing you down or contacting you over it so you feared they just it didn't exist right you right. know but it does exist it and when exist. and when the judge sits there and they put paperwork before him that this individual is supposed to be paying fines and fees they have not paid for more than three months six yeah. months whatever it may be we'd like to issue a bench, bench warrant does that mean they go to your house and they arrest you? No, no it doesn't. No, that's right. It means at some point in so time point, when you think that there's a pretty sheriff yeah. and you can sit there and lay some rap down yeah. and she runs you. She runs you. And you got a warrant yeah, for you, your arrest. You're going down. Your rap is no good. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. <laughs> you're Matter of fact, your rap costs you. <laughs> you're not getting a date. You're getting a date. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So get out there and take care of it, man. Yeah. I mean, you have the opportunity to not have to look over your shoulder. Look at the guy came in, his mom, 20 years yeah. driving without a license. Without a license. You know? Yeah. And so, what, what, how many? It was a few thousand. Oh, yeah. Was it tens? Tens of yeah. thousands? Yeah. Like that? Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a that's lot of crazy. money, bro. And that that's the type of money for people that live in poverty, which is Tucson, 10th tenth, tenth in the country for city this size, yeah. poorest, country, poorest country, poorest city. City, yeah. And, 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 and at cities this size. That's just absolutely incredible because we have so many people that are living in poverty that a, a battery or a tire, or tire is catastrophic loss. Do you think they're going to pay a fine? Right, right. They're right. going to put food on the table. You yeah. know, they're going to pay maybe the rent, maybe mortgage, if they can have a mortgage, because most people are, you know, we've got credit problems because we've been locked up, had our stuff towed. We don't, you can't, come on, bro. Just come on out there. July 13th, yeah, man, 1940 Silver Lake, Goodwill of Southern Arizona, yeah. fresh start. We're collaborating together. We're going to have jobs out there. We're going to have stuff out there. Also, man, please uh, get a hold of me at a abetterviewaz.com. I need individuals who want to get a free haircut and hang out with some pretty girls cutting their hair yeah. every month. Yeah. Okay, because we uh, partner with some Sports Clips. Girls too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they're really nice. They're yeah. really kind. They're sweet. Sports Clips, yeah. man, they've been Talented. hooking us up for so long, man. Yeah. And we, I need to help them by producing models for them to get haircuts every month. You get a free haircut and you get to sit there and hang out with some girls. I mean, get a hold of me, a better view uh, az at gmail.com and I'll set you up every month we go out there there's five or six or seven people that we need to get haircuts and we support the people that support us at Fresh Start that's right that's right that's right so guys get out there you heard it listen it's warrant day July 13th warrant day do not be looking good got your hair cut looking swagalicious got your hair done and you just blasting your music, and you get put over one little single thing. Let me tell you, your day <laughs> is going to be jacked up. Yeah. I can tell it right now. Oh, wow. So go bro. handle your business. We're bringing the city courts. We got Judge Blue and the crew yeah. that's going to be there to help you squash these warrants. Yeah. There's no reason for you to take a risk and lose everything you worked hard for to go down the tubes in a matter of a few minutes yeah. because you decided not to take care of your business. So warrant day, that's, that means uh, we're not setting you up to get arrested. Because yeah. I know some people be thinking like, oh, I got a warrant. So what's going to happen uh, when I show up? Nothing's going to happen. We're going to get you in front, of, in front of the judge and we're going to we help you to get your, your case adjudicated. We want to help you get this uh, resolved. So we want we will have prosecutors there. We're going to have public defenders there. So you will have representation there. But this is warrant day. July 13th is warrant day. We we are, we're we're making a a a broad loud outcry mm. that this is your opportunity of a lifetime to come in and get your stuff together. Yeah. So the other question is Dr. Hope, will you still do some uh, other services? Yes. Yeah. So if you still got tickets if you still got uh, court fees and fines and stuff like that that need, you need help on to get on a payment plan or in some cases because you just can't afford it, judges have been waiving some of that stuff or mm. significantly reducing those yeah. fines to make it affordable for your budget. Yeah. Restructuring your payment plan, right? Yeah. So there's no excuse why you can't come out. Now, this is focusing on city and justice courts mm. so we will not have superior courts there and the reason why i'm saying that is because 
uh, voters' rights and restoration of rights and expunging and sealing your records. That's through the Superior Court. We're going to be bringing them back in October to the Expo at the TCC where we can handle that. So, uh, so what we're going to be focused on is warrants because uh, there are so many warrants on the books in city courts and justice courts. And they want to resolve a lot of those mm. thousands upon thousands of bench yeah. warrants and, you know, yeah. just sitting there. So we want to help you. We want to. So let me help you to help yourself. OK, yeah. let's show up. Don't be afraid. We're not trying to set you up. You're not going to get arrested. You're not going to be hauled off to jail. But if you got pending warrants, let, let's work together to get those warrants reserved. Bro, it, it, when you take things, your possessions and you put them in somebody else's name. Your credit is not affected. Right. You're not building credit. You're not doing anything. Right. When you're trying to hide assets yeah. because you're hiding yourself because you have a warrant, yeah, bro, all you got to do is come out, take care of the warrant. There's not a paddy wagon waiting out right. back, you know, where we're taking people into the court now back into the... That has never happened, will never happen right, with Fresh right, Start. Right. That's not what Fresh Start is about. Right. Fresh Start is making sure that somebody can wake up each morning and know $10,000 of fines is behind them, that they have a structured payment plan on whatever it was that they were taking care of, that their fees and fines have been reduced to the point where it's actually manageable, yeah. and, and they can move forward in life and actually make a choice that, yeah, we can pay a portion of this each and every month because... Man, they put it in a place where we can get to it, you know. So if you don't come out, that doesn't happen. If you don't ask for help, you don't get help. Okay, people aren't coming door to door saying, hey, do you got a warrant? Look, you can go online, you can check TucsonAZ.gov, and you can go to the city courts and you can see if you've got any warrants, if you've got any fines and fees. You can look yourself up online. And, and get all that information and make sure that you take care of this stuff because right now you're just you're you you've got a bullet in the chamber and there might be two or three bullets in the chamber right now and 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 you're just getting up every day jumping in the vehicle and pulling the trigger yep yep so uh that's what we hear uh so fresh start so people that may be tuning in maybe heard us for the first time out of all the times we've been on the air you said what the heck is a fresh start so we're a nonprofit organization that has a mission to help form incarcerated people get on their feet. Mm -hmm. So we've been known for a long time uh, that if you get a felony in this country, uh, you pretty much have a life sentence. You, it's going to follow you for the rest of your life. We got so yeah. many of our brothers and sisters who's been in prison, who's struggling, uh, trying to make it, trying to get employment, trying to get housing. And we know that it's, it's really, really hard for people to get on their feet. And not only do we help foreign incarcerated people, number two, we are in the recidivism business. Mm -hmm. So if everybody wants to know why we do it, the why to a fresh start is recidivism. Uh, we want to make sure that we are helping people not to go back to prison. And we also want to help people who's on their way out of prison to have a real fresh start, not mm -hmm. a second chance, because a lot of us blown our second, third, and fourth chance a long time ago. But Whenever you're ready to really make a major change, we want to make sure that uh, you take advantage of this opportunity of making a change in your life, giving people the resources, the help, the support networks that they need. Thirdly, we are in restorative justice because in this country, uh, many of uh, former inmates, and we know you go to prison, uh, is more punitive than it is restorative. And that's mm -hmm. why they designed it that way. So people say it's a broken system. It's not a broken system. Mm -hmm. That system has been designed in place uh, for centuries that's right. uh, to, to marginalize and disenfranchise uh, people who's been in prison. And when they get out, uh, they're going to have a miserable life. And so when we start getting into the communities of color, we also know that when we got rid of uh, slavery through emancipation uh, in the criminal justice system, they were overly incarcerate black, black, former black slaves and black slaves and give them those those slave contracts to go right back into dealing with uh, uh, right. picking cotton, tobacco right. and all. Those. I'm just speaking. That's true, right. No, right? that's right. That's that's true. Yeah, that's that's real. very, very true. That's right. Um, Michelle Alexander wrote uh, the new Jim Crow uh, book. You should go check it out. And she goes deep into talking mm. about that space of how people have used the justice system and the prison system mm. to create slavery. And not just for black Americans, but for <laughs> poor white Americans as well. That will, they have to do these little, these little miniature 
a high labor type of jobs, pay them a little or nothing, and people make billions of dollars off the back of people who've been incarcerated. And please let me not talk about private prisons mm. where investors are making millions and billions off the back of people who've been incarcerated. That's right. We are in a serious crisis when we come to right. incarceration. Bro, I, I, while you're speaking, I, I automatically go back to when I was in school and you would see the janitors and, and they were mostly people of color. Yeah. Um, yeah. You would see the people when you're going down the street that are digging ditches. Yeah. And they're mostly people of color. People of color, yeah. Yeah. Um, any of those jobs that you probably wouldn't necessarily want to do. Yeah. Um, the person doing that job was probably a person of color. Yeah. Yeah. Um, why? You yeah. know, but when, when we make every opportunity available to every person, no yeah. matter what color they are, what shape they are, what size they are. Yeah. It changes the way you're going to see everything and through the lens that you look at everything. Yeah. yeah. Because you're going to understand, bro, that there's... You know, we talk about it all the time, walking to the center of the circle. There is so much more that we have alike than we have that divides us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and if we would start to recognize that the, the opportunity that we're given to speak life into every moment and to move forward into life, uh, man, it, 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 it just takes us back to prison if we go the opposite way, bro. And in, in, in that mentality, the box mentality, the cage mentality, Get rid of all of that, man, because that's where recidivism comes from. And, and we're talking about it all the time. In th three years, three and ten in three years, we'll go back. Seven and ten in five years, we'll go back. They're real numbers. And yeah. we sit at the orientation speaking to people, bro, and that room is filled with 10, 20, 25 people. Yeah, yeah. Okay? In, in three years, bro, three of those people going back. Yeah. In five yeah. years, seven out of ten are going back. There's 20 people in the room. 14 people are going back. Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, one of the things I noticed is the number of female inmates. Oh, jeez, bro. It's, it's um, going up. Man, and the numbers are going up. And these are mothers yeah. that have families that got kids that's sitting up in prison. Um, and so those are children... Uh, who's living with grandma or in the system in yeah. foster care yeah. uh, because a lot of these same families are, are single parents. So when we talk about, even just in Arizona, you, we have hundreds of thousands of people who have a felony um, and they're disenfranchised to vote. Mm. It's hard for them to get employment. Yep. It's hard for them to get housing. Yep. And that's what our show is about, is based off our mission of our organization, A Fresh yeah. Start, is that people don't realize you may do six years in prison, but that felony don't stop. No. After six years of serving, right? Mm. That, oh, you, God, no. It, it, it follows you for, yeah. for, for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, thank God now we have some, uh, a few arsenals in our weaponry, uh, weapons in our, in, our, in, our, in our arsenal to where we can now look at how do we expunge and things Seal like that. Seal your records. Yeah. Seal your records. And yeah. so employers can't look into it. But man, listen, this, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. And if you don't have training, you don't have resources, you don't have the things that you supposed to be having, man, it's going to be really hard for you. If you don't have encouragement, bro, yeah. if you don't have encouragement, and, and, and I mean serious encouragement, where somebody's just going to grab you by the shoulders and say, come on, bro, let's go do this. Because seriously, there is so much mistrust. We talk about it all the time because of the traumas and stuff like that. Anything in authority. And and. The, because of those traumas, we are going to resist authority at every opportunity. The, the parole people want to help me? No, not going to help. You, they're bringing in people to offer resources? No, I'm not going through that. I'm not going to. It's a trick. You know, it's like fresh start. It's a trick. We're going to get arrested. Right, right. It's not a trick, it's not man. A trick. There are so many people out here now that actually have a heart and care for our futures. Yeah. Because yeah. they actually value our lives like they should have been valued to begin with. You know what the, the largest, it just blows me away. The largest growing, one of the largest growing demographics uh, of homeless is 62 and over women. And, and one of the largest populations that's growing in prison is women 62 and over. Wow. Oh, wow. wow, bro. How, did, how is there a correlation there? Right, 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 right. You know, because rather than be on the street, I'll be in prison. Is that a choice that we're giving people now? Yeah. You know, and is that a healthy choice that we're good? Yeah. If you, you right, you don't want to be homeless, go to prison. 
And, and 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 I always talked about is that the prison industry is false advertising because mm. they say they're the Department of Corrections. So I always mm. talk about that stop line. Yeah. You are not <laughs> correcting. Prison is a department of punishment. Yeah. Because if it was about really when people get arrested and people get incarcerated, if it was about correcting, mm. you're about education. You'd be about rehabilitation. You're about helping people with mental illness. You'd be helping people with their paranoia. You create paranoia. Prison mm. is designed pretty much not only to confine you, but to create monsters. Yes. And when you create monsters, now you got to hire more guards to try to manage those monsters mm. instead of really focusing on the other side of helping people to rehabilitate themselves so when they get out of prison, they're ready to integrate society, integrate mm. their community, integrate their families. Mm. Um, and so they spend so much time dehumanizing people, demonizing mm. people, um, <laughs> and rewiring brains. Yeah. So when the time that they come out, they're different. Yeah. You know, paranoia, they got anxiety, yeah. they got depression, got PTSD. I mean, I can go all down the line <laughs> yeah. of what for our brothers and sisters is not just a felony. Yeah. Right. We talking right. about all of these yeah. extra things that is a major concern, almost like a another uh, public health crisis. Yeah, certainly, bro. And and like now we get because of what you've done, uh, we get to speak into the federal prison system and to those who are, will be administrators in the federal prison system now. And given that opportunity, bro, we tell them about the influence that they actually have that they have no clue that they have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that what they model, that inmate's going to walk out of that prison with that. Because I'm telling you, every interaction an inmate has with a guard, an administrator, anything in prison, they're cataloging that, bro. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. or bad, it's in that catalog, and they can refer back to it because our minds are like computers right. when it comes to the way we've been treated. Right, right, right. right. So I we get to speak into that space yes. where we could tell people, your modeling is going to change their future. Yes, awesome, awesome. So, Tom, let's talk about how um, many three minutes we have left. Uh, let's talk about not losing hope. Why is hope important for our brothers and sisters? Jeez, bro, they're, they're, why is hope important? Because there is light at the end of the tunnel, and no matter how dark you think that is, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Forty years ago, in a couple of days, I yeah. died at, at, in, in a gunfight with Tucson Police Department. And 40 years later now, we're bringing life to people, yeah. bro. And, 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 and we're speaking life into a space that 40 years ago, yeah. people were suffering in. Yeah. The yeah. Supreme Court Justice, bro, what did he say? The punishment is supposed to become be, being sent to prison. It's not supposed to come after you get there. Yeah, yeah. You know, praise be to God that we finally got a director at the Department of Corrections now that is trying to implement programming yeah. and, and, and trauma resilience and those things and allowing us to help, help do that, bro. Yeah, and th yeah. And that's hope, bro. Yeah. That a person that spent his life in prison is now giving hope to prisoners. Awesome, awesome. Listen, guys, don't lose hope. Um, our brothers and sisters, we now know you got technology in prison. We got brothers and sisters that now got tablets and mm. can listen to the show. And um, and I think Mr. Mason is always sending us uh, letters. We just want to give you shout out. Say thank you <laughs> yeah. for, for being a support and showing us love. We want you to know uh, that we uh, do acknowledge your letters. We do get your letters. We do read your letters. Um, and if you want to write the Fresh Start Show, please do that. Um, we would like to hear from you, um, hear your story, and we can give you a shout out. And we can also be preparing to get you connected with some resources. So if you're on your way out and you're just a few weeks and a few months out, please reach us um, and give us a call. You can call us on, on our, our Fresh Start business line at uh, 520 Five nine five. I'm sorry, eight 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 five. That's five two zero five nine five eight 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 five. And you can always uh, email me at demand at demandholt dot com or reach out to us on our website at www.freshstartinternational.org. We're there as well. Uh, so yeah, so give us a shout out. Reach out to us. Listen, uh, Tom, what you got? We got forty five seconds. Man, I, I'm I'm still doing what we do, bro. I'm going back to the uh, release center in the coming weeks uh, to start doing the orientations again. Uh, got a little offended by somebody being put back in prison, so I got mad at him. Uh, and I'm not going to do that anymore, bro. I'm I'm going to speak life, and 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 I'm going to move forward, and I'm going to try to get the dude the all the help he needs, so he doesn't have to go back there again, so he doesn't make the same mistakes he made this time. We learn as as everybody learns, and and when we do, 
we're one step closer to it never happening again. All right. Nine seconds. We are out of here. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see us next Saturday at the same time, 7.30 a.m. at 106 The Groove. Remember, no matter what you've done, everyone deserves a fresh start. God bless. Take care.